the learning objectives I've got for you. First one is comms. And this is gonna be something that's gonna be very important for you, especially if you wanna be in a pro, what to say, when to say it, to be able to control the team in a good, positive way. Your opping fundamentals. Um, you don't necessarily have to be an opper. It will make it easier for you to counter an op. Uh, we're gonna give you a practice routine as well. Spacing, escape routes, fight planning on the bare ass minimum, the worthy BAM for eco, so that you can understand better how the long game works, the dead space protocol, and moments of gameplay where your actions are actually in action. So this one fight here, you've only got one angle to swing out on. So it's a little bit disadvantageous for you. Plus you have peeker's advantage. Do you know about peeker's advantage, how it works? I believe so. So like whenever the person swinging, the person holding is gonna is gonna get the first shot. Yeah, and ping play is a, a factor in that as well. But um, and generally speaking in this, in this scenario right here, you've already been hit like probably twice before you can even shoot back. Right? Right. You got forced into that fight because of the utility being used. So falling back to hell, if you were a dice, could have been an option to stay alive right. a little bit longer. The role of the anchor and the role of the lurk is to exist as long as possible. These are the protocols that I'm going to give to you. So if you're ever in a situation where, once again, you are the furthest left, you are considered an anchor. Furthest left on the map. Or if you are the furthest right, you are the anchor. There's some other rules that you need to follow as well as an anchor. You're the last person to rotate. And if you are going to rotate over, let's say we lose someone. Let's say Omen dies here, okay? Everyone has to shift over one position to the right. Same thing happens if you were to die as an anchor on A, everyone shifts one direction to the left to be able to cover up all the spots. So dying on CT is a really, really bad thing because not only do you give up a death, but you also give up positioning on the map which forces everyone to move around. So giving up the first pick is really, really rough on any kind of map, especially Haven. So I have a question really quick. Go for it. So th this is like a, whenever I'm selecting my fallback angle, so dice is better because I can peek out from uh, two different angles and then I can fall back to hell easier, right? Yeah, so you have escape routes and you have multiple options for peaks. So you have the left side of dice, you have the right side of dice, and you have an escape route that keeps you alive a little bit longer. Buys you a couple more seconds for a rotate to come in. It's because I feel like I'm going to get pinched like on dice because they can peek me from like the left and the right. So how do I make sure like I'm, I'm staying alive on this angle? It's going to depend on the situation, but the mm -hmm. first thing I'm going to talk about is peeking on angles versus off angles. If you're fighting from this particular angle that you're doing right now, where your cross is over here, this is considered an on angle. On angles, you're going to be peeker advantage on. They're going to be firing at you. You're going to have a disadvantage. Typically, you won't be able to win that. The only times that you really want to peek an on angle like this would be with an off, okay? Long range on angle like this. Okay? An off angle would be over here on this spot. So if you were to uh, angle this wall to cut off this section right here, up and down, and just have this angle, that's considered a little bit of an off angle. But think about the pathings that people need to take when they run into this bomb site. They usually go into gen using this pathway right through here. Sometimes they'll go to to switch close the door so one two and three when you understand these pathing you can determine spots where you want to take fight right here's one of them peek into this off angle you can peek into an off angle when they're running to switch and you can peek into an off angle when they're over here okay and they're running to gen so the spots and where they are most vulnerable right here right here and right here and the reason why they're most vulnerable think about it from your perspective if you're if you're running into the bomb site and there's gonna be times on t-side to burn watch it feels pretty awkward running in here does it not yeah it does and why is that why do you think that feels like there's a lot of there's a lot of corners to clear and then there's also things that block your line of sight on site exactly and so there's threats so if we go through it one two under hell three right side dice four closet box on the top left generator this corner over here someone sitting in uh, tree room on this angle as well. Like there's so many freaking angles. So it gets really, really claustrophobic, right? There's so many right. different angles that you can be killed from. There's like a hundred angles. When they're in this situation, you need to be thinking about when is the best time that I can peek out? It's when they're in the most anxious position. The most anxious positions are these off angles when they're pathing in, usually right around here. When you're an anchor, two rules. Try to exist as long as you possibly can. And if you can't exist, you must try to get two kills. You don't want to get traded. You get two kills, you've done your job. So we're going to buy. So notice minimum next round, right? We always want to be trying to aim, especially on our third round, to be full buying. And a full buy is going to require minimum 3,900. This is not including buying all your utility and whatnot, right? So 
you need to be able to match, especially in ranked, match your teammate to be able to all of you buy vandals or all of you buy phantoms whatever the case may be and if you do that in ranked you're going to rank up a lot easier because you're controlling your econ right and you'll be able to have more rounds where you have guns bought now the issue that we have here you already know it minimum we have right now is uh 4400 on a second round lost you're going to get minimum 2400 barring all the frags that you get or if you're on t side barring the plants that you get we buy this sheriff yeah so minimum sorry minimum is going to be 3600 which means you can not buy heavy shields and a vandal in the next round and you certainly cannot buy abilities so that means in order to get value out of the sheriff you have to get two kills to be able to full buy next round oh no, i do drive oh cool so when you're driving i want you to start thinking about how you treat your side view mirror and your rear view mirror right these are the two important pieces on the on the on the screen the other thing too is you have your right side view mirror these are literally your mirrors right here when you're driving now most of the time you spend looking towards the center of your screen but when you're driving you also need to take in information all around you by looking at your mirror is someone going to merge into you on your left hand side right is someone going to come to your right what's going on behind you and you will often not just look at your crosshair but you'll also just flick over every few seconds or so when you're safe to take in information and see what's coming up behind you so it's no different here we treat it just like driving now the reason why i said zoom out your mini map at the beginning is because it's basically taking this side view mirror right now and you're placing a big piece of tape right across of your side <laughs> of your side view mirror and you're only getting half the information that you should be taking so if you make those switches that i gave to you right away it's going to give you a full mini map where you can get all the information that you need and what i want you to do is if you have that VOD reviewed look at it and be like okay why wasn't i safe there maybe i didn't mentally project where they're going to be maybe i didn't plan in my head a, a safe spot to be looking at it was i exposed to like one two three danger angles when i looked at my mini map we are now in dead space where basically what we're doing is not serving anybody we go back and forth, we're not even looking at anything. Kale's all the way up there, and he's not communicating to you that he wants to do this, so it's partially on him, but it's also on you for not prepping this for yourself at the beginning of the round with communication. And then Kale's gonna take a 1v1. Everyone has to move around to accommodate for the loss of the play, even though it is a 4v4. It's still an advantageous uh, situation for them, barring barring the economy. So once again, this is another situation where we have the smoke on, on here. And I think he even re-smokes it for you, so you don't have to be holding an off angle. You can actually just be holding the on angle and watching the smoke. The other thing that you need to think about is how important the clock is. All of your movements should be based on bringing this clock down. So your utility should be worked with that uh, as well. If you think you're under threat, then yes, pop the, pop the dash. But in this case, we're a minute, 12 seconds. They don't have to commit to this right away. Defense, we are whole bo toll booth operators and we're trying to get them to use their utility to be able to move into the bomb site. The immediate response that your KO had once they flashed was he was gonna molly the entrance. So we had to do something to counter that flash and that's where that that counter came the molly comes out they have to respond they throw a leer they're trying to get in here smoke is up again they're gonna have to use utility to try to get through that smoke how else what's an easier way for us to take space on this situation is there anything else that we can do i just want you to throw some ideas out there anything you can do to make your job a little bit easier to take space here rather than just dashing the only other piece of utility that i have is a smoke so maybe smoke something off like heaven or like oh just right there in between both mm -hmm. you could smoke heaven i like your i like your thought process that's definitely a good option but here's what i'm thinking let's have you throw a smoke right here and instead of dashing out into the open you can dash into your smoke this in effect will okay. allow you to create more space okay and it allows for your team to path in behind you because immediately people are like cats right there you, you shoot a laser into a wall the cat freaks out and chases the laser you're that right. laser if you put a smoke here and you dash into there everyone in the site starts looking towards that smoke you're pulling attention towards second frag swings in when my second frag swings in they're not even like looking at him as hard yeah and it makes it easier for him to win his fight exactly and the other thing too is that now they only have to worry about this angle and the uh, catwalk angle which by the way has just been smoke when they run in they don't have to worry about this because the smoke is probably covering as they're running in so you're in effect creating space you're making it easier for you to live and you're creating a better opportunity for yourself to get a and free frag as you go in so let's say we throw that smoke right here you dash into it you can then strafe out to the right 
You can take a fight on heaven or take a fight on dice. Right. Okay? When you do this, when you do this, you kind of YOLO in and hope for the best. Right, this could work. Yeah. But later on, you will get punished for this YOLO. I commented this round, the sins of before come back to punish you. So if you remember pistol round, how I talked about the pathing that you do is not really ideal. Right. Here's an example of you being punished by it. And now you're probably not gonna repeat that mistake. This is a really easy one. Right. Some of the ones that I, I tell my students are like, you're gonna have to get punished by this about five more times before it, this lesson finally sinks in. And you had the opportunity because you had the abilities to use them. If you have the abilities, use your abilities. If you buy the abilities, you should use them. What were your top takeaways from today? Top takeaway. First one, uh, with the opping, I need to have escape routes. I need to plan my fights ahead of time. Uh, you recommended maybe going in a custom and practicing. Okay, this is where I take my first fight. This is where I fall back to, second fight. Uh, so maybe like the fight selection with the op. Whenever they smoke off of, whenever they smoke off a site, I should hold an on angle rather than an off angle mm -hmm. instead of whenever i uh am on defense instead of playing instead of falling back to generator i should fall back to dice because i have more angles to peek from yeah more I'm fight not, options like, just not confined to that one spot whenever my ko is like fighting up like i need to make sure that me and my team are in agreement on what we're doing so if my ko is like pushing up there's no reason being behind the bot. Yeah, and the... I can't and I can't remember the exact term that you used for it. I think it was like dead space or something like that. Or like I'm not really doing like anything uh, i need to work on that as well yep i was gonna say yeah that's that's called the dead space protocol basically you're not you're not serving a function right now every every right. move that you make should ser serve a function of some kind um if your teammate is playing up then you should play up with them